Now that we've finally moved into our new apartment in Metro Manila, our family's ready to branch out to yet another city in the Philippines. Today, we're heading to Puerto Princesa in the province of Palawan. We're spending three nights in a luxurious seaside resort, but during the day, we're gonna be out for adventure. From roaming the city and tasting street foods to island hopping and exploring the famous underground river by boat. Let's get to it. I can't believe it. We just got into our apartment and we're leaving already. I knew that once we got the place and got settled in that we would be off and running, exploring the world, exploring the Philippines. But funny thing is, we're not settled in, not even a little bit. We've still gotta go. We have a new destination to hit. Down, no. down. You forget. We're headed to Palawan, an island that we've been to before, but not a destination. We're going to Puerto Princesa, and the thing that's really special about that place is it's the, one of the seven wonders of the world. It has an underground river. We cannot wait to explore that and check that off our list. We've seen a few other wonders of the world, so we're ticking it off one by one. Everything that we're doing on this trip is part of the Guide to the Philippines portfolio of services and trips and activities and excursions. We're gonna have information about each individual item in the description for the episode, but you can also just go to followabc.com slash GTTP to check out everything for yourself. Still heavy, but it's substantially lighter than on the way here. I love that we can finally leave stuff behind when we're traveling within the Philippines. Oh. Bit longer than 15 minutes this morning, but really that's to be expected. It's a Monday morning. We got a little bit of rush hour traffic out there. So we just got to find our way to the gate, security, and then see if I can find a Red Bull, which I highly doubt. This airport is kind of unique in how it's laid out with all of the different terminals. They are not within walking distance. There is not a train that goes between every single terminal. So if you go to the wrong one, which we've done before, it can really add about a half an hour to the trip just to get inside because we ended up having to get a taxi to get us to our flight on time. But luckily this time they're just redirecting us to the other side of this terminal. Um, and just to add on to what Phil said, when we were at the wrong terminal once, they have a shuttle, but it can take an hour, maybe longer, because they that bus has to go to each stop and then it has to sit through all the same traffic you do when you have a taxi. So it's much easier to just grab a cab if you're at the wrong terminal. Guide to the Philippines booked these flights for us. They arranged everything and they have us flying on Philippine Airlines, otherwise it's known as PAL. Whenever we fly domestic in the Philippines, we are often using Philippine Airlines because they have so many flights and destinations. I feel like you can go pretty much anywhere. I think there was only one destination we went to that they didn't service. Here's a tidbit that I find very interesting. I recently created a design for hats for our merch that is kind of components from the Philippines flag and the United States flag combined into my own unique design. And some people when seeing this online cried foul, said you're not allowed to use the Philippines flag in instances like that, you're not allowed to change it. We have very similar laws in the US, but I'm actually in compliance with it because what I've done is taken some elements from the Philippines flag and some elements from the United States flag to make my design. So I'm not actually using either flag, it's just elements of each. And that's the same reason that Philippines Airlines, for example, can get by with using elements from the flag. And as you go around town here, you'll notice that there are a number of other companies, bus lines and trains that also do the same thing. You see all of these little Philippines flags elements and all of these designs for all of these brands but they're all in compliance. And we have lounge access. We've never been to the Philippine Airlines lounge before. Lounge. <laughs> we have to have our carry-ons tagged as well. We're getting a personal escort to the lounge. I don't know if it's because of special service or because she knows we have no idea how to get there. Yes, we do have to go through security still, but we didn't want to film there, so we just made it through. That was the easiest, smoothest time that we've gone through security. I think in our international travels. Like it's pretty easy and streamlined when we're in Denver because we're so used to that airport. But you know, sometimes it takes time and processing and it's there are lines and you don't know which line you should be in. But this is so, so easy and simple and there was literally nobody in the security line with us. It's like a speakeasy, secret back door, secret elevator. 
And we just did a speakeasy tour, so you should check out that episode. <laughs> First elevator ride. Right? Yes, Wi-Fi, show daddy. We get Wi-Fi. We haven't gotten internet in our condo yet, so we've been without Wi-Fi for like going on three days now. It's a real pain. This is quite a treat for the whole family to finally be able to connect again. And that's also why we haven't posted a vlog in a little bit. So we're working on it and we need the Wi-Fi. All right. Good to go. Mm. And we get food! I haven't even eaten yet. I know Phil hasn't eaten yet, and the kids had very little at the apartment, so this was unexpected. I didn't know we'd have lounge access, and now we have breakfast. This is awesome. It's a veggie wrap, but I bet you can put it in the panini press and get it nice and hot and toasted. They got cookies and salad and some sandwiches, some pastries, and maybe some hot soup over there, so I know we can all find something. Ooh, looks like the flan just arrived at the party. With all of the cool stuff, like getting a personal escort through security, priority lanes, getting into the lounge. If you think that this is only because we're doing this stuff through Guide to the Philippines, you're probably absolutely right. But I think that's the level of service you can get when you book your trips through Guide to the Philippines. And we've got a lot of this sort of thing coming up. They've got us set up with tours, early check-in, late checkouts. Our lunches are all planned out for us. The transfers are all worked out for us. And they are so easy to work with. I mean, everything is laid out and all we have to do is show up. And this is all part of one package. So you can book a tours individually through them if you are going to a destination already. You can also book flights and uh, hotel stays and the tour packages as one package together. Time to board our flight, or flight or board. We're boarding right away. I love it. We just went straight from the lounge right up and we're stepping in line to board. I bet we would qualify for some priority boarding thanks to Guide to the Philippines, but we were a little late getting here, so I think we missed our opportunity. We were just enjoying the lounge too much, getting work done. Hi there, how you doing? Oh, hold on. Uh oh. I'm in trouble. Yeah, Let's not. step out of the way. All right, here we go. You would think we know how this works by now. Well, sometimes I forget. Thank you. Thank you. Salamat. Okay, but... 31 and 32, right here. <laughs> that is so funny. We're rows 31 and 32, so we thought that we were going to be much further back, but we're the third row. <laughs> I always try to match my shorts to my seatbelt on the flight. Hashtag travel fashion. Brooklyn is so creative. Like anything that uh, is artistic, like she's awesome at. She created her own iPhone stand. She travels with it everywhere. Uh, but I wanted to mention that I have been on a group chat with uh, Guide to the Philippines and tour guides and anybody that we're going to encounter on this trip. So everybody's on the same page. They already know that we've ordered our flight and everything is going so smoothly. Except for that, I just dropped my phone. So anyways, it's going so smoothly and I want to say thank you for Philippine Airlines. This has been the best experience that we've had flying domestically in the Philippines so far. It's an hour and a half flight, so we're going to see you in Porta Princesa. It is so beautiful out there. We're getting close to landing, and we have been to Palawan before, uh, once in Coron and then to El Nido, and they're each unique but so stunningly gorgeous. The rock formations that come out of the water, it's just so beautiful, and I can't wait to get back to seeing that again. Perfect flight, no delays, nothing went wrong. Where we're supposed to be, good job, pal. Even landed 23 minutes early. Passengers who will be needing special assistance. What is that? I love it. I love the new look. I support him and whatever look he's gonna go for. I'll wait for your vlog. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's okay, geckos, because I can smell them. And I'm not joking, that one smell when you get off the plane, you can tell if it smells like a toke gecko territory or a, just a house gecko. Colt is right. You got that sea air and it's nice to be back after three weeks in the big city and literally three or four months since we've been at a beach. I don't count South Africa even though we were on the coast a little bit. 
it's just not much of a tropical place compared to the Philippines. So, oh, it feels good to be back. Check it out, that's what we're gonna go do. Brooklyn bet me five bucks and I couldn't keep this tape on my eyes on until I caught a toke gecko. Yeah. Little does she know, I'm really good at catching toke geckos. So, I will take these off in no time and earn my $5. If it was $5 every time I caught a toke gecko while I had these on, I'd be a billionaire. I just got this message. Joven will be the driver for your airport pickup arrangements. He'll be holding up a sign for you guys at the airport in case you need to contact him. Here's his number. Easy peasy. Yeah, ah, over there. Early. I see it. Nope, over here. I love these Filipino island trips where I can catch toke geckos everywhere and we meet our little tour guides and we go on such cool tours and we get in this big van and we drive off. It's a memory that I have on every single one of these trips. And you know what? He's gonna have another episode on his channel, Colt in the Wild. Hi, welcome to Palawan. Hi, Mr. Philip. Yes, how are you? Yeah. Thank you, thank you. How long is the drive? Uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, oh, only 10 to 15 minute drive. Yeah. check-in process and uh, we're pretty early so the room is still getting ready we're gonna get some lunch while we're waiting they have resort bikes so if anybody wants to ride you just come over here and, and borrow a bike it's no it's fake. real that's real but it, it looks, looks like fake. it's the body but it's not it's, uh, it's yeah on top of something. that's exactly what i fake, thought so. why does it look fake though dad that's fake this spiders are fake don't worry that is just too risky. I feel like they're doing that so that if you do encounter a real one, you're not afraid of it. You just assume that it's fake. I just saw a sign that says, beware of monitors. Okay. I'm very aware right now, because I really want to pet some monitors here. So restaurant, I think it's called Tomato and Basil? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Tomato and Basil. They got a table ready for us already. It's nice and open. We're right by the pool, and we're going to start with some drinks. So they have a special little drink menu. And I already know what I want. I want a GB smash, and that's gin, lemon juice, and fresh basil. Who's the goose sitting here without sunglasses on? I'll take a look at this drink menu. It'll leave this kind of thing to the experts, you know what I mean? And we're not actually gonna order off the menu. They picked out some Filipino favorites for us off of here. They picked out this top one, the crispy pork, which will be like lechon, and Colt loves that. And I think Brooklyn loves that too. And then also, I think that I saw him say seafood. I love seafood. And then maybe some stuff on the back too. I like being surprised. You know what's funny? I hate ordering because I have food envy. I like it when other people order or order for me, or we have a bunch of things on the table to share and eat because I see other people's food and I want to eat it too. Well, they all sound good to me, so we are just along for the ride. I can't wait. I'm really excited to see our room because the reason why it's not ready yet is because they said they're doing something special for the kids in there. I can't wait to see what it is. I don't think we even know what kind of room we have, honestly. And if we are cramped into a teeny tiny room like we were for the past three weeks in Manila, fine by me because we're in paradise. We're barely gonna be in the room no matter what. Thank you. I got my GB smash, but Colt came screaming running up to us too, because he's he found something. What is it? I found a toke. And you might might be wondering why that's so surprising because I always catch tokes. It's because I've never been here before, so there might not be toke. So the fact that I find a toke means I'm probably gonna be catching tokes all night. Now I'm gonna go take a picture for you. I went in this little hut thingy and I just looked up and he's just looking right at me. Up all night and we'll never hear the end of it. But really, please go and check out his channel. He works so hard and he is he is such a professional delivery and we're really proud of what he's doing with it. Yes, drinks here, food's here. 
Cheers, Super baby. yummy. Oh yeah, of course. Cheers, always. Mine's good, I like it. Super citrusy and like a lot of basil chunks, so a lot of basil flavor, yummy. You know what else is yummy? Look at these vegetables. So there's Filtered tomatoes. Oil. Is that okra? Might be okra. Is it okra? Yeah. Okra, yeah, Filipino okra. Yum. Potato, or no, that's squash maybe. And then this crispy pork, so yummy. And I don't want any of you Filipinos yelling at me, so I'm gonna put lots of rice on my plate. Because Filipino food tends to be pretty salty, and so when you add the rice, it kind of evens it out, mellows it out, and you have a little bit more uh, balanced flavor. Also have, this is the chicken, and this looks so good. We're gonna dig into this, and then we're gonna explore our room and the property a bit more. We've done some damage. I think we are done, and now it's time to go see the room. The three of us are here, we're ready to go. We need to go round up Cole. I'll go get him. I wanna see what he's up to. Found, oh. <laughs> dude. Found a stick. One of the tokes is in that hut right there, but he ran away, I can't see him. One of them, you can clearly see in that hut, and he knows I can't get to him because if I were able to stand up there, I could easily just grab him and he'd have nowhere to run. But if I stood on there, I'd kind of just fall. Third one was in a little hut down there, but tonight, I can guarantee you there will be a 7,000th one. Probably only, emphasis on the only, have five in my hand. Emphasis on the only. Hi. I have two questions. One, I'm wondering, do you guys have a gift shop where you sell swimsuits? Uh, and then also wanted to check if our room is ready. Are you excited to see the room, Colt? Yes. Awesome, guys. Oh, nice. Okay, so who gets the TP? Look at the TP! Look at that! What? That's some pretty legit Photoshop work right there. They masked us out, put us on a different background. This is unexpected. We really didn't think that we would have a, not just a suite like this, but the TV, what? And the TP they set up for the kids. That's so, so thoughtful. Kids might be fighting over who's sleeping in the TP. I don't think they are because there's a special little kiddo sleeping area over here. They also have these bags for the kids. This is a really family friendly room. It looks like they have their own bathroom too. Shower, toilet, sink, that's all they need. This little living room is perfect for us to lounge around. We got our big TV with our faces. Uh, plenty of space for us all to sit and relax after a long day of tours. Let's check out where Phil and I are gonna be sleeping. By ourselves. Oh sweet, so they have a little welcome sign. That's so considerate. Love the sitting area, looking out into, what do you call it, garden? We got some ocean view over there. Multiple seating areas, TV, desk, and we got a bathroom back here. And on the way to the bathroom, there is a coffee and tea bar. There's a little mini fridge you can put stuff to cool in there. This is the best room in the house. Check out this view we have from the sinks. And we also have a jacuzzi outside that I know we're gonna be using later. That'll be the next episode. Toilet over here and around the corner, shower. And we have more outdoor area. We are sitting right up on the pool. So we have all of this lounge area, the two lounge chairs, the love seat over there, this little table, and steps right into the swimming pool. And it looks like it's private right here, but it opens up to the big, big resort pool. Let's see how warm the water is though. Ooh, it's kind of perfect. It's, it's not warm water at all. It's not cold either. It's just the right temperature because we're gonna be hot during the day and this will be a nice little cool off. I would love more than anything to jump in right now because I'm sweaty and hot, but we have another activity to get to. So let's get started on that, come on. We're meeting up with Ellen's travel and tour guide and this is our tour guide, Andrew. Hi. Good afternoon. And Ilsa. Hi, everyone. So we're here for Don't three. Our and our driver, Frankie! We can't go anywhere without Frankie. For the three days that we're having tours today, tomorrow, the next, uh, they're gonna be with us for all three of those days. 
And tonight it's called the city tour. So we're gonna see some sights around town and Colt's so excited about the first stop. There's baby crocodiles and I get to hold them. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Our first stop is just 30 minutes away. Puerto Princesa is the only actual city in the province of Palawan. There are other municipalities, two of which we've been to before. Coron Island is a municipality island. And then there is El Nido, which is also a municipality. So that just means that there's a distinction between the land area, the population, and the taxation system. But not only is Puerto Princesa the only city on the province and on the island of Palawan, but it is also known as the cleanest and greenest city in all of the Philippines. Why is that, Andrew? Well, sir, simply because in here, I would say that the residents are mostly disciplined. Uh -huh. And number two, the city government is also implementing that, uh, what we call this, the ordinances that penalize those responsible for disposing their waste or garbage. And then, of course, 70% of Puerto Princesa is still covered by forestry. That's why some foreign visitors also called us a city and the forest. So those are the two main reasons for considering us as the Hall of Famer for being the cleanest and greenest city in the Philippines. So when we first pulled into town, I was absolutely right by saying it looks so clean here. That's not the only interesting fact. It's actually the second largest city in the Philippines by landmass, and that's second to Davao City. Welcome to the Palawan Wildlife Rescue and Conservation Center. It's, it's a monster, oh my gosh. You gotta look closely because it's some mucky, murky water. The expert when we walked in here said that there was another one alive that was as big as the one that was just a skeleton in there. And I'm pretty sure it's either that guy or this one because he's huge too. It's this one, his name is Mok Mok and he's grown to be 17 feet. Oh my, I didn't know they grew this big anymore. I thought it was just dinosaurs. Colt and I just swam with crocodiles not too long ago in South Africa. If you haven't seen that episode, you've got to check it out. Nobody this big though. They don't just have crocodiles here, they have a, a couple of species of birds like this blue-naped parrot and that, that bird over there, you can teach it to repeat your words. So uh, Ilsa, our guy was saying, some of the locals will teach their bird to say uh, ugly in Tagalog so that when people walk by they shout ugly, ugly. It's mean, but they do it more as a joke, lighthearted to be funny. They also have the very rare Palawan bear cat, and they call it a bear cat because it looks like a cross between a bear and a cat. And he's sleeping right now because they're nocturnal. They run out at night for food, and while he's sleeping, he looks kind of cuddly, but don't you dare because they are actually very fierce and aggressive. They have two crested serpent eagles, and they call them that because they like to eat snakes. So if you see one flying around, there's probably a snake nearby. Not just snakes, but lizards. So maybe we shouldn't tell Colt about that. The facility here opened in 1987 and it was mainly just for the crocodiles, but as they expanded the land, they added more animals just so they can have some tourists and uh, other animals for the guests to enjoy. Like these monkeys. Look at that one, Dad. Enough of those silly monkeys. We got one more kind of cool thing to do before we leave this place. Oh my gosh. So that was a really great end to this crocodile tour. I know it made the kids really happy, but it's not the end of this city tour. We have more destinations to go. Now we are at Baker's Hill, more specifically the Baker's Hill Leisure Farm, Botanical Gardens, or Theme Park. Not theme park like rides, roller coasters and Ferris wheels and that sort of thing, but a theme park because every holiday they decorate the entire thing in a different theme. We're here in a pretty unique time right now because they are actually disassembling all of the Christmas decorations, including all of the Christmas trees that are made out of recycled soda bottles. It's only about one square block and they have everything from an actual bakery where we're gonna try some goods here in just a minute to a place where you can buy some of these goods, to several restaurants. They've got the botanical gardens in the back, so they're not growing vegetables or foods. It's a botanic gardens with 
floral fauna, fowls, beautiful trees, and a big playground for all the little ones to spend some time. In fact, that's where Brooklyn and Colt are already. Colt, I see you found your way over here since there's some food. You would be right. I found my way over here and there's food. This is the famous Filipino snack, hopia. And we had this once before in the Bonando food market, but that was our very first trip to Manila and now we're really experienced Filipino travelers. And we're gonna try this special ube flavor. We love ube. It, it's really similar to taro. It's a root vegetable and it's purple, but it's also kind of sweet. And then the other one, Colt like is clawing at, is fudge. Yum. Kids are gonna like that one the best. Outside of the Philippines, these are sometimes known as moon pies. Not in the US, that's a different kind of moon pie. Ooh, they're warm, the box is warm. Mm. I'm gonna try one. Break it looks one of those so good. Open and show us. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so purple. Okay, I'm gonna try it. You ready? Mm -hmm. Oh. That's a moon pie, moon that is amazing. Okay. Tastes like vanilla and chocolate combined. And my dad said moon pie, they're actually moon cakes. Looks like a perfect purple little cake inside, so moist. Flaky on the outside, it's just flaking right off. Mmm. Dense and a little bit sticky. Mmm. Mmm. It has like a marshmallowy kind of a flavor. You know what I love about it? It's not too sweet, because I don't like my, my sweet treats to be too sugary. Uh, it, it's like a little bit powdery on the outside and crumbly, but then it's really gooey on the, the inside. And it almost has like a marshmallow taste to it. Oh, really, really good. All right, let's try the fudge. Which one do you think you're gonna like better, babe? Ube. Look, they look like perfect little southern biscuits. I think the surprising part for me is how sticky the ube was. Oh, look at that fudge, but it is so dark that's almost black. Need a glass of milk with that. That's really good, very different. Like so much separation between the outer flaky crust and the filling on this one. It's somewhat subtle in terms of chocolate or fudge flavor. Also really good, but I think I would prefer the ube every day of the week. You know what I like about it? It's like a brownie. It really is sticky, like you would want some milk with it. But it's like a brownie batter, not like super milk chocolatey flavor, it's good. But I like the ube better. Now that we have our favorites, let's hit the road, go to the next stop. There are two different houses right here on the grounds and they are actually used to house people who visit, but it's only the family of the owners who stay there. The place we're standing right now is called Plaza Cuarto, and it has some special meaning to me. It's a former military base, and during World War II and the Japanese occupation of the Philippines, this was under Japanese control. There were 150 U.S. service members who were taken as POWs and were working right here in Puerto Princesa. One of the things they were forced to do was construct a runway, the same one we just flew into. And when they were done with that, they were forced into trenches here and set on fire to be burned alive. 11 of them miraculously managed to escape alive and swam across to the other islands. So those 11 soldiers literally swam from here across the water to, I think I said it was a different island, but it's actually not. It's still part of the mainland, but it is Iwahig Penal Colony. One of the survivors of the massacre was Don Schlott, and after the war, he became a sculptor, primarily with concrete is my understanding, and one of the works that he made is this one right here, which is basically a memorial for all of the other victims of that massacre. When he was in his 80s, he came back to this exact spot and brought this with him. That was in 2010. Around the base of the statue are engraved all of the names of those who perished in the event. Right up here by the main entrance to the plaza itself is also the entrance to the tunnel that those soldiers were forced into before being burned alive. Right here is the very entrance, the hole that they went down into. It goes all the way under this and out to the shoreline, and that's how the 11 survivors escaped into the water that night. That day, that morning, I have no idea. We're not joking, we want to adopt them. Can we please adopt them? <laughs> I'm not joking, no, seriously, please. please look at this. So Why wouldn't you want this, Dad? You and I are please, so different. Dad, can we please adopt it? We are not adopting any cats. We're gonna call it an end for tonight, but know that this city tour actually can involve a whole lot more. We're just a little bit short on time and we need to get back to the resort. But don't worry, you're gonna see a whole lot more of Andrew and Elsa as we continue to do more tours with them this week. 
Today we're up at 6 a.m. because we're meeting back up with those tour guides. We are headed out on an hour and a half long journey to get to one of the new seven wonders of nature. This is gonna be our family's third out of the seven and we can't wait because I think it's gonna be one of the most spectacular. We are hopping in our van right away. Except it's not here. We were here first. There's Ilsa. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Andrew. He was with us yesterday too. Anyways, it's not working. let's roll it on for another day. Colt's got to sit up closer to the front because he gets a little motion sickness and it's going to be an hour and a half drive. So he's got to look at the horizon. That's the trick. If you get motion sickness, look at the horizon on a boat or in a car. Good morning, Frankie. Frankie has been with Ellen's Travel and Tours for over 20 years now, so he is a veteran, a total professional, and he's gonna get us there safely, starting now. From the looks of the water, that wasn't our only bumpy ride for the day. It's a little, little bit choppy out there. Whew. Need a really good stretch after that drive. But we've probably got about 15 minutes here as our tour guides, Andrew primarily, goes over and negotiates our little ride across. What This is the uh, Philippine Sea, by the way. And we're going to take a motorized boat just for about 20 minutes to get us to where we're actually going. We are going to sail through a subterranean river. It is one of the natural new wonders of the world. Bill says no. What, what is it? Seven new wonders of nature. It's one of the seven new wonders of nature. But before we get into that paddle boat, we've got to take this one. And Andrew is trying to negotiate a private motorboat for us because they usually seat 10 people and they want to get as many as they can in there. We're a party of four, but with our filming and everything, it's a lot easier to be private because we don't want to disturb other guests. You might think that it's pretty crowded with all those boats out there, but it is nothing compared to when the cruise ships come. They actually reserve time after 10 a.m. just for the cruise ship crowd because it's just so massive packs of people coming in here. They want to see this wonder of the world. The little village here is called Sabong, which is why this is called Sabong Bay. And you can see even without cruise ships, how many of these boats are out here. There must be at least 100 to 150. I wonder which one is ours. And we're ready to go. Let's see if Andrew is able to negotiate that private boat ride. Is it just us? Yes. Uh, he did it. He did it. We have a private boat. And I think we're going to have to get our toes a little wet. We'll see how warm the water is. Thank you. Slightly chilly, but very refreshing. Got to have our life vests on. So we're super safe and it's about a 20 to 25 minute boat ride and it's about to get loud because like we said, it's a motorboat. Yeah. And that's what we're Told ya. And this beautiful sandy beach is St. Paul Subterranean Park. And we gotta get out now so we can transfer. Watch your hands. Oh, okay. So pretty out. A little windy, still so pretty. I'm honestly just looking for monitors. We all have to get helmeted up because it can be a little bit dangerous in there with the rock formations coming down pretty low as we go through some of the shorter areas. But there's a secondary reason why we want to wear a helmet. Yes, it's called holy water. So if you feel a drip coming from above and it's cold, that's holy water. But there are also bats in there. So if you feel a drip from above and it's warm, holy crap. I forgot to think that we were going to have helmets and I did my hair wrong. A bun is probably not the right way to go, but let's see if we can fit it in. Right on top. All right, no problem, let's go. You look like a construction worker. I feel like a construction worker. I'm gonna drill some holes in some concrete. The little holes that you see in the sand down here are actually little crab huts, but they're nocturnal, so they're not out right now playing around. Not good crab, not the kind we'd wanna eat. So pretty over here, 
here. It looks like a lagoon. Morning. Good morning. As we're walking up to our boat, our rowboat that we're going to have to take, they're giving us these devices. So these are listening devices, kind of like a museum. So we have earplugs that we wear in our ears and when they tell us, we're gonna turn it on and it'll be like a recorded device walking us through facts about the cave, the nature, the environment, and uh, we're gonna learn a lot as we go. Our uh, cave guide, Hello, good morning. Hi. for now, his name is Sunny. Sunny. He will be the one to take care of you during your tour inside the cave. Sunny, right. nice to meet you. So we have our boat rower, Sunny, and Andrew was able to secure us another private boat. So we're all, all our group is here. We just pushed off and we are headed into this cave. It is gorgeous. This is like serene and calm. We have our audio on already. So it's just starting off with a safety briefing before we get in there. But I just can't get over this, this sight. It's, it's awe-inspiring. Probably the most important piece of information before entering the cave is to keep our mouths shut. Not just by minimizing talking and other noises, which can disturb the ecosystem and the experience of other visitors, but much, much more importantly because there are frequent drips from the cave ceiling and you never know if they're water or bat droppings. That's right, this tunnel's home to thousands of bats and several species of small birds and fish. And we're unlikely to notice the birds and fish, but we should see plenty of bats. We also need to avoid touching the cave walls so we don't disrupt the ecosystem. You may notice painted marks and other writing on the walls as we go through here, and they think that's from an old expedition where they weren't as respectful to the preservation as we will be. It's super quiet in here, which is a nice contrast, frankly, to the noise of the Bonka boat that we took to get into the bay. Everywhere you look are stalactites and stalagmites. These are the cone-shaped formations that are formed over many years, and the difference between the two is that one is connected up above, and the others connected down below. You can remember which is which by associating the one with a T, stalact heights, with top, because they come down from the top of the cave. And associating the one with a G, stalagmites, with ground, because they seem to grow up from the ground. To be clear though, both of them are formed from dripping from above over many years. And here's our first encounter with the river's most famous residents. Even the short section of the cave that we're traveling through is full of formations with uncanny resemblance to things from the outside world. The first example is this outcropping that looks a lot like the head of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. As we enter into the area the tunnel referred to as the Cathedral, there's a giant formation that's called the Giant Candle for pretty obvious reasons. It's also home to the Holy Family Formation, which looks a whole lot like a nativity scene. Into the next passage, we can see rock formations that look like they're pulled from a farmer's market. Many people see things like carrots, chayote, corn, mushrooms, peanuts. So this is definitely a spot where you want to keep your mouth closed, especially if you're looking up. And this is one key reason that you absolutely cannot get into the water inside the cave. It may look very clear, but the banks are lined with bat poop which is also known as guano. One of the most famous shapes is this one resembling the face of Jesus from the Shroud of Turin. I have to say, it's pretty spot on. Speaking of, all of these spots on the ceiling are hundreds of sleeping bats. And up on that ledge is a formation they say looks like Jesus' disciples in Leonardo da Vinci's iconic work, The Last Supper. But enough about men. Here's a shape that looks like a woman's naked figure from behind. They call it Sharon Stone. It's handy to have our guide shining the spotlight on all of these formations, but if you want to see what it's like in this cave when humans aren't exploring, check this out as he flips off the light. Yeah, that's so strange, actually. A little bit unnerving. So as we finish up the tour and head toward the light at the end of the tunnel, we're left with a real appreciation for the fact that this is the only one of the seven new wonders of nature that you can't actually see under natural conditions. You have to use artificial light. That's kind of crazy. There's a monitor. Look right there, there's a monitor. I found a little monitor. Woo, here's a little guy. 
so fun. Can I see him? Wow. So they said that some people describe that as a spiritual experience, and I certainly understand why. It was beautiful, and it was a privilege to go in and see that whole ecosystem in there, and we learned so much about how it formed and and the, the magical feeling that it gives you because the formations mimic uh, the human world, but it's all created 100% by nature. Time to take off our helmets, but my bun is actually stuck in the back, so I have to undo it. Voila! Did it, how did it come out? Intact? It's fine. Not intact, we'll see. So the entrance and the exit were the same. We're walking back basically the same path that we came in on, and we're going back to the port where we originally started from when we got the motorboat. This is a horizontal map of the underground river. So you can see over here on the right hand side is where the inflow is. So the river is going to flow leftward in this diagram. And then over here on the left hand side is where we went in and out. Now here's the cathedral area and we only went about twice as far as that. So we were about a kilometer and a half in. That's as far as we can go without getting special permission from the tourism office here, which would allow you to go a little bit more than twice as deep as we did. This tree is a Dita tree. And even though I'm touching it with my hand here, it's actually a poisonous sap that they get from this tree and they use it to coat the tips of arrows or spears for when they hunt. And then when it pierces the skin, gets into the bloodstream of the prey and paralyzes them. I can't move right now. <laughs> okay, we're getting back on the boat. I just learned from Ilsa. They're experiencing a monsoon right now, and that's why it's so windy. But she says March, April, it's really calm waters. That's what we remember seeing when we first went to Palawan and Koran. Uh, that was uh, over a year ago. But these winds and the waves, are, I, I didn't expect this trip. Let's get in the boat again. Cole, what did you think about the Underground River? I loved the Underground River, but I especially loved the monitors. Of course, of course. We're just waiting for our turn to dock. Just like when we started, there were a lot of boats. There are still a lot of boats and probably will be most of the day. Not crowded once you get to the underground river, but here it's really crowded. wash our hands and our feet. We're getting back in the van for a quick five minute drive to lunch. Thank you, quick trip. But what a pretty area. Uh, I can't remember the Tagalog name, but it means tree, uh, tree forest? That's the name of Kakaoyan, Forest Park and Restaurant. Kakaoyan. Kakaoyan. Kaka Forest Park Kaka and Restaurant. Kakaoyan. Kakaoyan. Kakaoyan Forest Park and Restaurant. And you know what makes me happy? Buffets. So they've got a huge spread here, starting with, oh, plate please, thank you. And utensils, let me load up. Pork leuya. Lauya. Lauya. Pork lauya, and it looks like a, a brothy pork soup. Eggplant salad, I love eggplant. A jackfruit salad, that looks delicious. Vegetable spring rolls, also sounding really good to me. Chicken adobo, and that is the, probably the most popular dish in the Philippines is adobo. Pork caldereto, gotta get this big carrot. And then fish steak, I'm gonna skip because I got so much protein already. Don't yell at me, I'm not gonna get rice this time. I'm gonna get noodles instead. I'm running out of room. Ah, uh, and this is a uh, bottled gourd with tofu. Colt likes tofu. Little known fact. Bitter gourd with pork. And I'm totally out of room on my plate. So until dessert, this is gonna have to do. That's a phenomenal buffet. But we're not quite done eating because we just ordered something kind of unique, special to this region. And they say it's a delicacy. I don't know if I wanna eat one of those anymore. Because now that I think about it, I've seen one of those before, and I'm, they're so gross. 
Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to eat it first? So, um, before you eat, sir, much better to put into the vinegar. Okay, so just dip it in so there and then eat it. Yes. Okay. I have a thing where I love trying new things. This is just, I'm scared. I, this is devastating. This is called tomaluk, also known as the woodworm. It's not actually a worm, it's actually a mollusk. Very disgusting looking. They say it tastes like a raw oyster. No, no, I didn't touch him. I kind of like oysters. So maybe I'll like this. Nope, I can't hold it any longer. I'm going to put it in my mouth. Weird redhead people. Too weird anymore. Yeah. I mean, you might have got looked at when you Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Your turn. Do you like it? Your turn. I'm holding it. Hey, here, buddy. Hey, Colt. Cool. Cool. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, my turn? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Colt did not sell it on me. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what's the flavor like, Cole? Tastes like vinegar, dung, lemon, and straight salt. But it really has a, a taste like a warm dung. It tastes kind of like poop. <laughs> it has the salt taste of an oyster, but it is so much grosser than oyster. And I like oysters. No thanks, you can try it. Cole's not a fan, but uh, I am really, really proud of him for trying. That is the most important part. Now he knows not to order it again. It looks like snot. I am nervous about trying it because Colt's reaction was um, not favorable. But I do really enjoy local delicacies. This dish means something to people and they eat it for a reason and people do like it. So um, I want to give it a really fair try. It's not that bad. It's really not that bad. I, it really tastes like an oyster. It totally tastes like an oyster. But you, I, I feel like I could have just swallowed it whole. I don't think I had to chew it so much. It's not that bad at all. I think he just needed to dip the whole thing in vinegar and let it like drip off a little bit. Phil's turn. Yeah, you're about to see something real special. Here he goes. Oh. It does taste like an oyster, but with a very distinct flavor of, you guessed it, wood. It tastes like a woody oyster. We love to eat oysters. I wonder if we lived here, if we would love to eat woodworm. It's not bad. Well, I guess we're good here. We're gonna head back to the resort because we still have a couple of really cool things we wanna check out. Let's go. Actually, we can't leave yet. Andrew wants us to see one more thing before we go, and the kids are yelling at us to come too. Oh. There's the boy. <laughs> Welcome to my home. So this word, Sarakan, means stairs going up. And they've made this play structure here. Is it for kids to play on? It's for anyone to play on. <laughs> but it is not Tagalog, which is the most popular dialect throughout the Philippines. It's a local dialect. They also have a really special tree on their property. It's called the Century Tree because it's over 100 years old. And it's actually a Da'o tree. Look how big it is. Now we're gonna get in the van. <laughs> After a long day of activities, you wanna come back to your resort for a little relaxation, some rest, and a little pampering by the resort. So the housekeeping team came in here and they are setting up a what kind of jacuzzi, Brooklyn? Can I go play on the beach? No, I'll tell you. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Milk. Now can I go play on the beach? A milk and honey jacuzzi for the family. They gave us two different options. It's a citrus soak or a milk and honey soak. And Brooklyn's obsessed with milk, so she shouted out, milk, milk, milk. So that's why we're doing that one. And Colt's gonna tell you about the benefits of it. And the benefits are moisturizing, skin softening, and exfoliating. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. 
This was really easy to book. In fact, it was part of our package. So when we checked in, Faye, who was helping us out, she asked us what time and which day we wanted uh, this experience, the jacuzzi bubble bath. It feels kind of strange to think that there's literally a bottle of honey in here. But of course it's not sticky because there's too much water so it dilutes it plenty. And the milk makes your skin feel really soft and nice and lovely. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Mumbly! This is such a great way to end our day. I was originally thinking that it might be a little too hot in the Philippines to actually do a jacuzzi night like this, but it's been perfect. Not only is it nice and air conditioned in our unit, but out tonight, you've got this wind going from the monsoons all day. I think everybody was a little bit chilly and if you take that on top of the fact that we were walking and hiking and boating and just so much stuff going on with travel over the past couple of days, I think we were all ready for a little pampering and this was perfect. Now we're hopping back in our van because our guides are already here. Ilsa and Andrew and our driver Frankie. Hello, good morning. It's just going to be a 30 minute drive. Good morning. Okay, we have a little pit stop before we go to the dock and that's to get our snorkel gear, a very important component to this day. The rental shop is called Yazi and it's one of the more popular ones in Puerto Princesa because of their sanitation of the masks, their cleanliness, their supply, and because of their awesome shop here. They've got a big TV showing you what you're going to see when you get to Starfish Island. That's going to be your first stop. Uh, and their uh, awesome products here. And because they're all very friendly as well. <laughs> Then put it down here, and then you can adjust here and open it. What do you think? Is that the right size for him? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Get here with it on. So we've never used a full mask before, and we're going to give it a try on this trip. I, I don't know if I'm familiar with these at all. We've only used ones that are like this, with the snorkel and the mask separate, so it'll be a fun little experiment. That'll be good. And this is better with my beard because the other kind that comes under your nose, you end up leaking right here. So I think the way that this one wraps around might be better. We also picked out some water shoes. It's because of the venomous stonefish, so you don't want to step on them. They're not mandatory, but it is a good idea. Okay, I think we're all set. Oh yes, we're almost all set. We also need to buy bread to feed the fish. Thank you guys. We've made it to the wharf of Honda Bay right here and the first thing that we need to do is take care of the manifest, so all of our paperwork so that we can head out there. Let's get up here with Andrew and Elsa and see how the process works. Here's how the flow of the tourist goes. Once the visitors arrive, either tour guide assisted or you're just a walk-in visitors, you got to register first your name in here. I am very thankful that we're working with Ellen's Travel and Tours because they have taken care of all of that stuff for us. We have nothing to do now except board the boat and enjoy the day. But speaking of the boarding the boat, we're actually starting off right here and our first stop is Starfish Island and then Luli Island and then we go to Cowrie Island for an awesome lunch before heading right back full circle to this Honda Bay dock. Hey, very good. It is time for us to hit it. Let's go meet our boat guy. I'm so glad that we're doing this today because a lot of people come to Puerto Princesa just to see the subterranean river, which we did yesterday. So please check out that episode. But there is so much more to see here. Palawan is a large province and a long kind of skinny island and there's so much to do. So make sure if you come to Puerto Princesa, you leave enough room to do more exploring and island hopping like we're doing today. This is a bigger boat than we were on yesterday. This one will fit, I think, 20 or a little more. Kind of a loud motorboat, but not as loud as the ones we had yesterday. Probably because the engine's housed in the below deck area, so it just muffles it a bit, but it's a whole lot better than yesterday. But it is strong. I can feel my teeth shattering. Or not shattering, chattering. <laughs> my teeth are going da 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 <laughs>
Well, we made it to Starfish Island. It's actually low tide right now, so a lot of the rocks are showing and a little bit more of the island is out right now. They call it Starfish Island because usually when you pull up, there's tons of starfish everywhere, but it is seasonal and that season is summertime. But we're probably going to find a few. I bet you anything Colt's gonna find some cause he can find anything. Yeah, it looks like Colt's already. This is an uninhabited island and it's beautiful. My favorite part, as it is on most beaches, would just be lounging right here. So it's obviously very non-crowded at the moment because of the seasonality and because we're probably here earlier than some people are gonna show up later. But all of these little hut areas, one of which we have back there completely reserved for our own use, are just overlooking the water. And it's super, super quiet, other than the sound of a little bit of a breeze and a whole bunch of bugs up above in the trees. So there are probably about 50 of these little huts in here, so you could have a pretty good crowd. Here's Bruce Lee fiberglass. They've got great bathrooms right here. I think Erin just used them so she can tell you whether or not they're very clean, but I think they are. A couple of dogs out, hanging out here. And then over in this area is where they sell fresh seafood. And they'll not only sell it to you, but they'll grill it up for you so you can have it for a meal while you're staying here on the island. Let's take a look. These are sea urchins and they came from right on the shoreline over there and they are edible, but you have to be careful if you don't know about sea urchins. The tips of the needles on them are poisonous. So you don't wanna to touch them, you wanna avoid them. If there are sea urchins in the area, definitely make sure to have water shoes, you don't wanna step on them. They also have these giant clams, mussels, oysters, and they look like little, small conch. And right back there is where they'll grill them up. But the popular activity to do here is snorkeling, and it's not so much for the coral system, it's for the fish, there's lots of fish. And we have a little, food for them, so maybe they'll gather. But the coral system is not terribly healthy here because people don't always know. You cannot touch coral. Your oils in your skin can kill the coral, and we can't live without our coral systems in the ocean. The ocean can't survive, which means this earth can't survive. So it's really important to keep your hands and feet off of coral when you're swimming. Let's get that bread now. Here you can really notice the low tide because all of this would otherwise be underwater. Brooklyn's using the bread already and it seems to be working just as planned. The bread totally does the trick. They come running with every little drop and then when we stopped feeding them over here, they're all swimming over to Brooklyn because she's dropping some bread in the water over there too. But there's this one really pretty blue guy. We're trying to feed him, but the little yellow and black ones are faster. Ow, ow. Oh, they keep biting my fingers. Mm. Oh, the big one and he got they're really, they're really trying to snag it out of his hand. So much so they're taking little bites out of the, the tip of his fingers. <laughs> Woo! Oh, sorry. Aww. Sorry about that. I just got a little uh, jumpy because they tried to take a bite out of my leg. They're like the most gentle little nips and nipples. They don't hurt at all. There are actually a lot of spas where people pay for that because those fish will eat the dead skin off of your feet. So it's like a little pedicure. You know, we were fully anticipating our whole bodies getting wet, snorkeling, swimming around, but not necessary. It's really just the waist down that gets wet and you can see the fish so, so clearly in this beautiful water. And it looks like we are out of bread now. So the fish aren't interested in us anymore. Let's go on shore. All right, we've used up all of our time on this island, so we're gonna jump back on the boat and head to the next one. Audio Starfish Island. We never did see an actual starfish here. On to the next one. Ooh. Um, Brooklyn, says, hey. Brooklyn says she saw a dead starfish, and there are apparently a lot of brittle stars right now. Ah, oh, thank you. close to the island, it's Luli Island, and there's a diving platform we're passing by, and Colt's getting hyped up. And I'm gonna jump off the giant diving board that's like as tall as this boat, I guess. 
everybody's finding starfish here. The kids are yelling, starfish, starfish, and then there's one right there in front of us. So wrong island, but we found starfish. <laughs> Less coral here and more sand here, so it's easier to walk on. I don't have aqua shoes, so walking on the last one across all that coral was really painful on my feet. This feels more like a sandbar than an island, and you can see how far the tide comes up here. It would just be this little strip of sand if it, the tide was in. Uh, but they have these cute little cottages where we can put our stuff and have some shade if we need it. We haven't even made it to our hut and Colt's already on the dive platform getting ready to jump. Yeah. <sighs> Clint's running off for the diving platform and I'm going to go catch up to them because I want to jump too. This is going to be nothing for Phil because he did, what was it, 10 <laughs> meters when we did canyoneering in Alegria on Cebu Island. <gasps> That was so high, that was like an epic, epic jump. I love, love, love the sun. I just don't think I could live without feeling the sun on my skin. And this could not be a more perfect day. It has been so windy since we got to Puerto Princesa. But today, not windy, waters are calm, beautiful, perfect, clear sky, awesome weather. Woo! I got salt water in my eyes. It's mommy's turn now. All right, here we go. My turn. It doesn't feel like a diving board. It feels like a pirate ship plank. There you go. You got this, Brooklyn. You won't regret it once you go. Okay, that's everybody but Brooklyn. And if you remember our canyoneering episode, she's not big on the jumps. So I don't know if she's gonna go to the date or not. What do you think, sweetheart? That said, we were on a diving platform pretty much exactly the same height, maybe a little bit higher when we were in Shargao, and she and Colt were just jumping over and over and over. So I think it's just ripping off that band-aid, getting the very first one out of the way, and then she would have a lot of fun doing it. I think it's gonna be a no for Brooklyn. I think we're gonna get a couple more dives in and then go chill in the booth. There are more things that you can do on this island. You can rent sea kayaks, and also they have that clear bottom boat. And you can relax on these hammocks. I like that they're made out of bamboo. Or not bamboo, what is that, straw? It's, uh, oh, it's like a leaf. Palm leaf. Palm leaf. Palm leaf woven together, and you can just chill, take a nap in here. It might actually be bamboo. Ah, there you go. They also have Holy Smokes, which is a little cottage for food. You can order a few things, but we're not gonna have lunch here. We are headed to the next island and we're gonna have a big lunch spread there. There was a jellyfish, it stung our leg, so then we captured it. My right here. Oh yeah, it still hurts right now, like dirt. Too fine, buddy. Found a little jellyfish. You guys stung me all over my leg right there. Mm, he's big. All right, you guys are gonna have to let him. I know. And then let's take a picture and head out. So let's get in the boat. on Kauri Island now, and I love this part of the island that we're on because it's practically surrounded by the water. We're on the tip of it, uh, but this is where we're gonna have our lunch, and we've been told it's gonna be a very delicious lunch, and I am so much in the mood for seafood. Look at this, we have our own little area. It's been reserved for us. We got some nice shade, some tablecloths, I am so hungry though. That's not all they have. I see something over here that seems right up my alley. Got a little bit of everything. I think I'm gonna get a rum because it's such a good beachy drink. I'm just gonna have it on ice if they have ice. No, she wants more Look mango. at this spread. Oh my gosh, this looks so incredibly good. There's so much I wanna talk about here. So over here is this watercress and it's deep fried. So it's super, super crunchy. So it's like a seaweed that's deep fried and really, really crunchy. Got some green beans, eggplant, and cucumber salad. This platter over here is so fun because they spelled out Palawan in rice. Ooh, yellow rice and Actually, white I rice. I spelled it wrong. Palawan. No, yeah, this says Palawan. Palawan. 
You said it's spelled Palawan. We've got some fried chicken, grilled fish, mussels, I bet they're fresh, and this is some, some pork. And these are really awesome because they're sea grapes. It's a type of seaweed, and it has lots of iron in it. So if you need that supplement, you get it in this. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try some of that. Mm. This is really good. It almost tastes like pickled seaweed. And then over here we've got some yellow watermelon, pineapple, and of course, mangoes, because we're obsessed with mangoes. I thought that was uh, green beans. It's actually water spinach. And as you can see, this is a lot of food. Too much for a family of four and two guides so they don't waste it, which is really important to us. Uh, they feed the boatmen with it afterwards. Nothing goes to waste. Okay, there are some utensils here, but this meal is not intended to be eaten with utensils, so I'm gonna try to get through without. You know, here's the thing. I love everything about the Philippines. One thing that's a little bit surprising is that you are expected to eat a lot of things with your hands, but they also have very small tissues, or napkins as we call them in the U.S. In the U.S. we have big napkins, very often very big cloth napkins. You can make a huge mess. We're eating barbecue in Kansas City or pizza in New York. You make a big mess, so you gotta clean your hands. Here it's like, eat with your hands, but they're small, small tissues. So those two things don't seem to go together for me. Anyway, it's pretty thick and medium. Very crunchy, that's good. It's gonna go really well with my rum. Best mangoes in the world are here. They are sweeter and juicier, and it's just the most pure mango taste you can have. They're so good, it's my favorite. Mm. Mm. Brooklyn's obsessed with them too. Oh, what are you doing, buddy? Opening the coconut. It's too dirty to put sunblock on his arm. Remember, protect your skin. Load up on sunblock and reapply every two hours. PSA from Aaron. Not just any sunblock, you gotta use biodegradable, that's key. I just got a coconut, but it's been in the salt water for too long, so it smells like salt Ew. and coconut. It smells horrible. What? The wind is actually blowing my way. It smells it terrible. Me. It won't make me sick, but it's disgusting. Because it's covered in salt water. He <laughs> cracks me up. Just like that coconut. Just like that coconut. I think we're ready to get back in the boat, head back to the dock, and get dropped off at our resort. We're gonna have a little break, and then we have some evening activities to do here. All right, kiddos, let's go. We are leaving a little bit later than expected, but that's okay because it's a private boat, it's a private tour, and we have a few hours of downtime here coming up, so we can do pretty much whatever we want. All the boats have numbers on them, so we know which one is ours. We're number 51. And the ride back is probably gonna be about 10 minutes because they saved the best island for last and the closest to the dock, so won't take much time to get home at all. And just to be clear, when she says they saved the best island for last, that's this one. I'm about to jump off the end of the boat into the water. I'm actually gonna cannonball. You ready? Go. This is a great first half to our day. We're not done, we have more to do, but it's good to have a little rest in between, especially for the kids, a little downtime is good. But I'm so glad that we're ending on such a good note with Colt jumping off the boat, they're getting to sit up front. We're all having a good time. If this dock is a rockin'. Don't come a knockin'. Oh, really? I guess, I don't know. I was like, hey, let's party. Let's party. Okay. Thank you, baby. Woo! Yeah, that wind really came in. <laughs> shortcut, huh? Yeah, they took the shortcut. Yeah. Hello. Do you have like a dark green? So we have to stop and drop off our snorkel supplies and then we're going back to the resort. Mmm, that's good. No, Caramelized and... Kuya Andrew picked up some snacks for the kids, a Coke and these banana, are they called banana cubes? 
banana cubes, so it's like sugar caramelized bananas. Well, let me correct it. It's not banana cube. It's banana cube, like a play on barbecue because they they roast it on the grill to get the caramelization. Another correction for me. <laughs> Those are actually deep fried. We oh are my goodness! Clea Andrews five spoiling pounds. us and going nuts. He just pulled over one more time for another stand and got Colt some more banana cues. And, and also, oh, holy smokes, oh, look at that. Look at, all the, look at all that dripping on the side. Do you eat it whole? Banana. Sp banana spring roll. Yeah, yeah like a banana like spring that. roll. So exactly. it's covered in rice paper <laughs> and then deep fried. What happened to It takes a while to get to the actual banana. <laughs> I still haven't got any banana. <laughs> I've got some banana in there. Really good. Mm. It's way better. You just got the rice paper. Woo. We're gonna get cleaned up, have a little break, and then we'll see you for the evening tour. Just a couple hours later and we're ready to head back out. It's a whole lot darker now. Meeting back up with our gang. Hello. Let's go see some fireflies. Sit up front or in the back, bud? Back. Good evening, by the way, my name is Ed, your tour guide for our fireflies. Right away, we step out of the van and Ed is greeting us. He's gonna be our guide for our firefly tour. Hi, Ed. Welcome. And we're hopping right onto our boat. It's been such a long time since we've been on a boat, I can't even remember what it feels like. <laughs> Hold the rail and uh, slowly. Hello. First thing we have to do is put on our little life preservers. Coast Guard requirement. Brooklyn uses hers as a blanket. So serious. We're gonna start off with an orientation with Ed. I know we're going to see fireflies. This is ironic. We're gonna put on some insect repellent because of the other bugs in the area. We're also going to transfer to another boat, a smaller motor boat. Ah, uh, thank you. So the boat we're on sure. now is really just a shuttle to get from where we were out to the place where we're gonna get on the motor boat so that we can go do the firefly viewing. Keep an eye on that table, because we're going to be back, you'll see. Naturally, this is going to be pretty dark from here on out until we get through the firefly part of it. We have to turn off the lights, of course, because we wouldn't be able to see the fireflies if the lights were on. Are you seeing them? We're going to have our first sightings right away. And in the Philippines, they believe that mountains and valleys that have fireflies are enchanted and that maybe those fireflies are actually fairies. Oh, and I see some. Look up there. Now this is the first spot here, Mom, and so we call it the outpost. Earlier, you don't see them flickering. Look, and then they flash. It's such a clear sky. The fireflies almost look like the twinkling stars. They almost match, but we are really lucky with this weather. You don't feel the wind where we are right now. We're kind of protected by the mangroves on each side. And it's just beautiful, beautiful clear sky. We could even see Jupiter. A few fun facts about fireflies. The males are actually brighter than the females and they don't hear sound. The thing that makes them glow brighter sometimes is actually lights, because they it, are attracted to other lights, and especially red lights. So our guide has been using a red light up and down in the trees to help make them glow a little brighter for us. What do you call fireflies? I grew up calling them lightning bugs, but apparently they're exactly the same thing. It just depends on what part of the country, US, or what part of the world you're from. I called them fireflies growing up, but I've also heard them called glowworms. I used to have a toy glowworm that was supposed to be a firefly. We're done with the firefly tour. We learned a lot, we saw a lot of fireflies, and now we're pretty hungry. And it's good timing because dinner is ready for us on our boat, so we're gonna eat on the water. We have so much to eat. We have the national fish of the Philippines, is lapu-lapu and shrimp and pork and chicken adobo 
uh, and lumpia. See, I'm saying it right. Lumpia. We got right rice, of course, and then like more sea, sea grapes flavor. today, and bananas and pineapple, and we can't <laughs> wait to dig in. I said mangoes. Did I say mangoes? I I'm saying it now. We got mangoes. <laughs> This is actually our last night in Palawan before we head back to Manila. So it was great that we got to eat with Ilsa and Andrew and our new guide Ed tonight. We're gonna head to the shore. We're gonna see all those lights over there. We're gonna see what that's all about. Now that we've disembarked from our little boat trip, we are right here on the Bay Walk, which is also known here as Bai Bai. Up until 2004, this was actually a residential strip, so locals lived right here along the shoreline. But in 2004, there was a massive fire and those homes were destroyed. The government then built homes for those residents just about a half a block over and made those available to them for 500 pesos a month for 25 years, so very affordable. And ever since that period of time, this has been built up into a massive park lined with restaurants and it's one of the favorite areas for locals to spend time with their families. After three days of jam-packed itineraries exploring Puerto Princesa, we finally get some downtime here at Princesa Garden Island Resort and Spa, and we are starting this morning off right with a floating breakfast. You're probably wondering where the kids are, and they went to enjoy the full buffet breakfast that they have just past the lobby. We've had that every morning since we've been here, but today Phil and I wanted a special moment just on our own to do this floating breakfast. And we have some fresh fruit, donuts, bread, rolls, juices, and of course, my morning favorite, my coffee. Oh my gosh, it like changes me. My first sip of coffee in the morning, I have that sip and I just feel like a whole new woman just rushes through me and I'm alive. I love it. And of course, I'm not a coffee guy, but I am very much a pineapple guy. And this pineapple looks phenomenal. Mmm. I'm surprised it's not dripping in the pool right now. It is so juicy. This is one very, very good reason to live in a tropical environment. The fresh fruit is unbeatable. Erin would probably only be happier if there was some of that famous Philippines mango, as if she didn't get her fill yesterday. I love mango, it's no secret. And we learned something really cool yesterday about the mangoes here in Palawan. They are super delicious and sweet and kind of different from the rest of the country in the Philippines. And you can't really experience them outside of Palawan because they don't allow exporting of mangoes because there is a bug that like implants itself in the skin and so the Department of Agriculture won't allow any mangoes to leave the province of Palawan. So you can't, you can't transport them. You can't get these mangoes anywhere but here and they are super, super delicious. And I think this takes me back to my first time like falling in love with mangoes and it was in Palawan. It was on Coron Island, our very, very first trip out to the Philippines and our very first trip out to Palawan. But we're gonna make quick work of this breakfast because we have so much more to do today and so much more of this resort to show you. Now we got Colt here to raid our breakfast. You want some donuts? Maybe not a donut, but I'll take a cinnamon roll. Ooh. That's okay. Oh, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Colt, we're spending the whole day at the resort today. What are you looking forward to doing the most? Catching my last token. <laughs> of course. I thought he was gonna say, I don't know, the arcade, mini golf, for the kids club, but of course, Lizards. As long as we're here, and as long as I want to go get a little bit of protein, why don't we take you over and show you that buffet breakfast soon? Look, there are the kids. Let's go see what they're up to. So this is an addition to the huge pool that's right in front of our room, and they have a kids area and a big slide. So like no matter what the kids' ages are. If you're not familiar with the channel, our kids are 11 and 12 years old and they go nuts for this big windy slide right here. But they also have a younger kitty play area over here for the little, little ones.
Right over here is the Tomato in Basel primary restaurant that we featured in our very first episode from this trip. You can check that out if you haven't seen it. And by the way, this would be a great time to subscribe to the channel if you're not already so that you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. We're back on track, headed to the buffet. Now we could have included some eggs or other breakfast items in our floating breakfast, but we decided not to because one, I love a buffet, uh, and two, we had the buffet breakfast included with our package anyway, so we thought we would have just a light bite when we woke up and then take our time to come here and enjoy the full spread of breakfast. And look at this beautiful path to the restaurant. It's actually much bigger. They have a huge outdoor area, but we're only using the inside because it's not terribly busy right now. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Ooh, the smell. They have numerous stations, uh, starting with this donut bar. You can actually put your own frosting and sprinkles on it. A uh, noodle station over here. And then these are all the hot items, and these are mostly Asian breakfast, uh, maybe a little mix. I see some eggs over there of Western. Um, the garlic rice is a staple in Asia. Some bacon, everybody loves bacon, right? And then they have an egg station. So you could do scrambled, you can do omelets, and include any ingredients you want, and they bring it straight to your table. Could I please have some scrambled eggs with chicken ham and mushrooms? Okay. Two omelets, sir. You guys so get scrambled eggs with the, the chicken ham and cheese. We also have some cold salads, the cold salad bar, fresh fruits, which we already enjoyed this morning, so we can skip those. The same fresh juices that we had this morning. Also, yogurts, a little yogurt bar. Some pancakes, waffles, and French toast, and of course, some syrups. And then a bread bar, so lots of pastries and breads. Last but not least, we have charcuterie and some cheeses. But I think our breakfast is ready now. Thank you so much. The kids came to breakfast without us while we were doing the floating breakfast, and I can only imagine they loaded up on the pancakes and the donuts, and we're gonna have to get some good nutrition in them later today. It's about 9.20 a.m., and we have an appointment at 10 a.m., so we're gonna eat up and head over there. Now we're heading over to the kids' zone, also the arcade, though. It's kids' time, and this is also included in our package. Woo, they have a ball pit. We're gonna meet back up with Faye. She's been helping us every step of the way since we arrived. She helped us check in and has been checking in on us daily and making sure that all our activities are going smoothly. I feel like everybody's working together. They're not just, the resort isn't just out for themselves or our tour guides weren't out for themselves. They all communicated with each other. And this has been an awesome trip, not just for us, but the kids. But check out this arcade room. Woo! So the kids have basically their own little snack bar and pastries and lunch and also maybe some adult beverages too. So this is kind of like the play area. And just to clarify, there are no adult beverages for the kids, but this is also a great area for parents to just hang out, have a cocktail if they want to while spending time very near to their kids. It is a really neat environment. The atmosphere here is just as good for adults as it is for kids. And of course, if you want to take part in playing some of the air hockey or the pool, that's a great adult activity too. Now back outside here, they've got so much in terms of seating areas. Picnic tables galore, you could throw a massive party out here. They also have a legitimate mini golf course out here and two chickens that are laying eggs. I wanna eat them. Chicken the, or the eggs? The eggs. Which will I eat first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> A lot of stuff you can do in here. There's ping pong, foosball, basketball, darts. This has to be the safest game of darts I've ever seen because you can't really hit anybody else unless you actually try. It's like a gun range. Whoa, that's some wicked technique. That's not bad for a first time ever playing darts. Oh my God, he almost got a bullseye. And a beautiful garden area. It's called the Old Manila Lounge, and there's another dart area there as well. Speaking of Manila, we are headed back there today. Later tonight, we're gonna be on that PAL flight back to our home. I can't believe I'm saying that, our home. We have an apartment in Manila in BGC now, finally. So this is our second home base here in the Philippines. Hi, Faye. Hi, Mom. How 
thank you. Oh, My I hope you enjoy your stay here with us and um, I hope you come back next time. Today is like the only day we've had to like really enjoy the resort. So yes. we're exploring because everywhere. Uh, because of your almost two days, you're all out of tours and other uh, activities you have outside. Exactly. So enjoy your stay, enjoy your time here. And of course, your other we have other activities here. This whole area is called Game On. It is for all ages, but we're gonna head next door to Little Boss, which is for kids three to 12, and it's their daycare facility. Oh, they have a mahjong room in here too. Ah. And as we're walking, we have the Aling Aling, Aling Elena snack area. It's a tongue twister for me. So you can order snacks inside uh, or outside here, picnic tables. This is the kiddo spot. Remove shoes before entering. Ooh, jungle themed. They got a ball pit, slides, just this whole climbing jungle system here. Oh, we got a game of tag going on. Looks like things are already getting a little nuts between these two, which probably explains the maximum age in here of 12. They're at the top of that already. So just past that building with the daycare is this pavilion, and it's a little bit makeshift right now. It's often used for weddings or other events, so it's got all the chairs set up in here, and it can be configured pretty much any way any guests who are throwing a special event want it to be configured. It's also being used as the gym right now. Hey baby, spot me. Somebody was lifting heavy, look at that bar. They're actually building a new gym right behind us, and if you haven't noticed all the construction noise and work that's going on, that's what it's for. They're adding 150 new rooms, a new spa, a new gym, and a bunch of other features. They're even adding another pool, a rooftop bar, and rooftop activity area. I think it's gonna be totally epic. There's also a lounge over here, and we haven't even gone in there yet. I'm not sure if it's open, but let's find out. The Island Lounge. Nope, not open. But let me peek. Yeah, it just looks like a nice little lounge. Like some tables, some chairs, and also extends to this outdoor patio too. I'm on a mission though. When I went on the website before we came, I saw that they have over the water bungalows and I really wanna find them and see them because Phil and I have never been in an overwater bungalow and that's kind of a dream of ours, a bucket list item for us, but it's really hard to find affordable places that fit a family of four or five, which is how we travel. And what I saw is that the prices here are really affordable, but I don't think that they accommodated a family of four. This way to Water Villas, Golden Elephant, Seafood Restaurant, Sandbar, Floating Cottages, lots of stuff this way. And the flags, they give it away that this is part of the resort. Covered walkways in resorts like this are awesome because you can get a lot of rain depending on the time of year. So being able to walk whatever this is, 150 meters out of the rain, is a real game changer on those days. Now, just like the view outside of our room, everything here is really kind of dependent upon the tides. Right now it's low tide and the way that the moon has been operating for the past few days, it's been high tide in the middle of the night. So you don't really get to enjoy as much of the water during the day this week. Luck of the draw. So beautiful. The water gives you energy. I feel like that's a proven scientific fact that when you're near water, you feel more energy. And I always feel it. I, I think if we ever settle down again, it has to be near the water. I've got to be near the ocean or the sea, the Philippine Sea. But we found the villas that are over water. And like Phil said, the tide is really, really low. So the water we get pretty high when the tide is in. All right, the next thing on the calendar, karaoke. And I'm not much of a performer for dancing or singing in front of people. So putting uh, any kind of footage of me singing out on the internet is a little bit crazy. So I think I'm gonna need a bit of liquid courage and I know a fantastic place. And although I don't have a very good voice, I don't need the liquid courage, but a drink does sound good. They are open. Oh, my friends are here. Oh, one for the road. <laughs> I love it. We just met Virgie and her husband walking around. They're here from DC, so fellow US citizens. Cheers. Cheers. Lobby bar. I think they have the best selection of booze here, so we should be able to get pretty much anything we want. I just learned more about Virgie and her family. Her parents and her siblings were born in the Philippines and they're doing a family reunion trip, a few weeks long even, because they wanted everybody to experience the motherland. Uh, not just their parents coming back or her siblings, but their kids too. So they're just having one big party from one island of the Philippines to the next, kind of like our family. 
Name is Sala Lounge. They have some fantastic signature cocktails here. And if you like these cocktails, you're gonna love our bartender. Hello, I'm Love by the way. His name is Love, if you didn't catch that. A vodka soda with calamansi for her. And I'm gonna do a dry martini, actually extra dry. This feels like a vacation at the end of our adventure, which I mean, really, that's exactly what it is. We had three days action packed, and now we get to sit and enjoy the pampering and enjoy the relaxing of the resort. And it reminds me of how diverse the Philippines is. And Filipino pride is a real, real thing. And once you come to the Philippines, if you haven't been here before, you understand why. There is so much diversity, not just among the people, but among the scenery and the different islands. If you go and explore other areas, you'll see that there is something so incredibly special about every part of it. So we understand the pride. And now that we're residents, we have that pride too. Two luxury relaxation at an awesome resort. New favorite drink. You know what this reminds me of? Long, long time ago, we used to do this series on YouTube and it was called Hump Day Happy Hour because it was on a Wednesday every time. One time we found ourselves at a resort on the beach in a beachside pavilion in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. We sat at a gorgeous bar, had a bartender who made us phenomenal Mai Tais, and we literally set up our cameras right there on the bar and made our episode for that hump day happy hour right there on the spot. It was so much fun. Those Mai Tais were awesome, and the atmosphere was unbeatable, just like here. Comment if you think we should bring back hump day happy hour. We would do it as a live so we could do Q&As and recap some of our travels, or if you have any ideas for it, let us know. But now that we have our courage, let's go sing. As you remember, the karaoke is inside, game on. Hey, bubbies. Hi. Where's Brooklyn? Oh, he's showing the room. She is probably wiped out and exhausted because one of the best things about having back-to-back -back activities is that it wears your kids out. Are you worn out? Are you too worn out for karaoke? That was sus. <laughs> Actually, I just called Brooklyn in the room and she's gonna come join us. My dad said that they're gonna eat these eggs, but they actually don't because they're fertile and they're gonna let them hatch and then they'll just have baby chicks running around in the golf course, but obviously they'll stay near their mother. It feels like a microwave hot dog. Here are the instructions for karaoke. Dance like nobody's watching. No problem, I do that all the time. Sing like no one is listening. Easy, we all do it in the shower. Love like you've never been hurt. That's my favorite, do it every day. Live like it's heaven on earth. That's also my favorite, do that every day. Let's do this. Oh, this is awesome. How many karaoke rooms do you have? Six? Nine. This is obviously the sixth room, but it is air conditioned and it smells awesome. And what a comfortable place. Can we order drinks? Yes, ma'am. Can I get a Royale? Go for it. Can I have a vodka with pineapple juice? I'm looking for Party in the USA. Who sings that? Miley Cyrus. Oh, right here, Party in the USA. Okay, mom, get ready to type this in. We need Brooklyn to be our remote control girl because every time I have issues with an electronic, especially and in including to, with remote controls, she jumps in and she knows how to operate everything. So she's gonna operate the karaoke machine for us. Oh, stand up. Stand, you gotta to stand, stand up, up bud. You have to go high. Right. Right. This is gonna be horrible.
it's mommy's turn and I like to have a little fun. This is a throwback to my childhood. You know who you are. began, I can't begin, there's no when it was spring. <laughs> Sweet Caroline, whoa, 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 good times never felt so good. So good, so good. This is my signature song. I am obsessed with my song, my favorite song of all time. He's got Betty Davis. Imagination, life is your creation. that karaoke session thank you if you skipped forward a little bit we understand it's time to go we've got to head to the airport now and the craziest part of this is that we are flying back to our own apartment in metro manila let's go get our bag thank you man leaving a place like this really makes me want to do one of aaron's gratitude moments because even after only three nights it feels like home and it's hard to leave even going back to our own place in manila I'm gonna miss it. This place was great. Final moments here. We've had our gratitude. We've said our thank yous. We've said our goodbyes. And I want to give one last thank you to Guide to the Philippines for curating this whole package for us from the flights, the transfers, the hotels, the excursions, everything. And we are so grateful because it has gone so smoothly. Again, so easy to book and communicate. And we are leaving that link below. So don't forget to click on that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment. Follow us along. We appreciate the support and we hope to see you in the next episode. Are we having goodbye, sweetie pie? Yeah, I did.